13.1 right triangle trigonometry all right so first thing is we need to understand the different parts to a right triangle so if you remember okay, a little box created that is where our 90 degree angle is our right angle okay now the opposite side of that right angle is always going to be the hypotenuse okay so it's always opposite side of the right angle now if theta, if theta okay theta here representing our angle that we're probably evaluating from okay go to the opposite side of that that is the opposite side of theta now the side that is right next to it that's not the hypotenuse that is our adjacent side so now if theta was over here you'd have to flip-flop opposite side and adjacent side okay it all depends on where theta is so you need to remember the different parts to a right triangle opposite side adjacent side and hypotenuse now another thing you probably remembered from geometry Sokotoa. Okay. it's an acronym that helps us remember our trig ratios okay so sine sine of theta we're looking at so starts with an s so that is telling us the sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse okay cosine if we look at there that is our ka that is telling us the trig Ratio is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And then finally, toa or tangent, that is opposite over adjacent. Okay, now we're gonna move a little past just sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, we got the reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So again, reciprocal, flip-flop. So we got hypotenuse over opposite. And then if we do the reciprocal of cosine, which is secant, that's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. And then finally, the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent, which would be adjacent over opposite. Now, big thing, a lot of people mix up the reciprocals of sine and cosecant okay a lot of people do think sine and secant are just because they both start with s's does not mean they're reciprocals remember sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other and cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other all right so evaluating then using those six trig functions from the angle theta shown in the right triangle so let's just break it up Okay, if I, theta is right here, remember, opposite of that, this is our opposite side. The one right next to it is the adjacent side. And then the one that is opposite of the 90, that is always the hypotenuse. Okay, so if we're evaluating from theta, sine of theta, so again, Sokotoa, opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse, or 12 thirteenths. Cosine, okay, ka, adjacent over hypotenuse, so 5 over 13. Tangent, or toa, opposite over adjacent, we got opposite side is 12, and adjacent side is 5. Okay, so that's evaluating our six, well, three of the six. And then just remember, <clears throat> it's a reciprocal. So cosecant, again, is the reciprocal of sine. So just flip-flopping 12 thirteenths to 13 twelfths. For secant, it's going to be 13 fifths. Cotangent, 5 twelfths. All right. So now looking at special right triangles. Okay, these happen very often, and we're going to use these a lot in this chapter. Okay, we have our 45, 45, 90. Okay, and our sides, X, 
x x root 2. Okay, now to make things easier, we're going to set a number for x just for now. Okay, just remember that it can be anything, but we're just going to say 1, 1, root 2. That's those are the side lengths that we're going to use for now. Okay, for our 30, 60, 90, okay, it's going to be x, 2x, x root 3. Okay, and again, we're going to use an x value of 1, so we're just going to set it as 1, 2, square root 3. Now, you just need to memorize these. Okay, you need to memorize these special right triangles. 45, 45, 90, that one's pretty easy. Side lengths are 1, 1, and then the hypotenuse is square root 2. For the 30, 60, 90, that one's a little bit tougher. Okay, 2 is the longest of 1, 2, and root 3, so 2. And if you're, you need to remember that the hypotenuse is always the longest side on a triangle, right triangle. So 2 is always the hypotenuse. The side that is opposite of the 30 is 1, and the side that is opposite of... 60 degrees is square root 3. Okay, now the other thing to remember okay, that side, this side right here, that looks quite a bit shorter than the other side, and one is shorter than square root 3, so that's one way to help you remember. But now, what we're going to do is going to evaluate all the tr trig functions from these common angles that we use, 30, 45, 60, okay? So these are, you know, especially if you're moving on to trig next year, this is a table that's going to help you a lot if you can just memorize them. Now, sine of 30, okay, sine of 30, that's what we're doing right here, sine of 30. So what we're gonna go do, we're gonna go to the 30, 60, 90, sine of 30, sine opposite over hypotenuse, so opposite, over hypotenuse, that's 1 over 2. Okay. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, so square root of 3 over 2. And then tangent, toa, opposite over adjacent, so 1 over square root of 3. Now, here's the tricky part. We cannot leave that. We have to rationalize that. Okay, we can't have that radical in... The denominator so if you remember we got to multiply both top and bottom by square root of three which gets us to square root of three over three okay and then we can end from there cosecant is the reciprocal of sine so two over one or just two secant two over square root of three again which will end up being two root three over three because we have to multiply by the square root of three on top and bottom and then cotangent square root of three over one which is just square root of three, okay? Now, same thing all the way through this, okay? Just 45, now we're gonna go to our 45, 45, 90. Okay, sine, opposite over hypotenuse, one over square root of two. Okay, which would end up being square root of two over two. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, square root of two over two. One. I'm just going to go through the rest of these. You should understand how to get these after doing that 30. Now, you, again, for 45, then you're just going from one of these angles. Okay, No matter what angle you go from, it's going to be the same. Okay, So for 60, going across, it's going to be square root of 3 over 2. 1 half, square root of 3, 2 root of 3 over 3. 2 and square root of 3 over 3. Okay, so in that roll, you're just going from your 60 degree. So opposite over hypotenuse, square root of 3 over 2. That was that sine, okay, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse from 60, 1 half, 1 over 2. Okay, so it's just evaluating those six trig functions from those given angles. And again, those are very common ones that will be very helpful if you just know them. So, solving a right triangle then, okay. we need to find all the parts, okay? We have 
three different angles. We got angle A, B, and C. So to write that, the measure of angle A, that's how we write in shortened terms, the measure M, angle, that's where we're getting the angle from, and then A, measure of angle B, measure of angle C. There should be three angles since it is a triangle. Now, we're given B, we know that is 62 degrees, and we're also given C, which is 90 degrees. Now, if you remember, the measure inside of a triangle is always going to add up to be 180 between the three of them, okay? So 60, Two plus 90 plus what is going to give us 180 which is 28 degrees so this angle right here is 28 degrees so again need to add to 180 degrees now in order to find those missing side lengths as well okay we have three di three different side lengths we have B and C so we're just gonna call a that's our six and then B, we do not know. And then C, we do not know. Okay, so we're going to use our six trig functions, whatever one works best, to solve for those side lengths. So, now, we're going we're gonna to have to use one of the angles that we're, we have now to help yourself out. I would always use the one that is given to you. 62 degrees is the one that's given to us. So, if we're going to figure out B, and we're going to use 62 degrees. B is right there. And we're going to have to use the side length that is known. So as of right now, we have B, which is the opposite of 62. And then we also have the side that is adjacent. So opposite over adjacent. We have... Okay, opposite over adjacent. So again, Sokotoa. We got tangent. Okay, so tangent of 62 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, which in this case was B over 6. Now, we're solving for B. Okay, so to solve for B, I got to get rid of that 6. So if I multiply both sides by 6... We got six tangent, six times a tangent of 62 degrees is equal to B. Now at this point, this is where you can just type it right into your calculator. Okay, so at that point, type it into your calculator, you should get a value of 11.3. So B is equal to 11.3. Now, when, in your, when you're in your calculator typing this in, we are in terms of degrees. So you need to make sure that your calculator is also in terms of degrees. After we do C, I will show you how to do that. But let's figure out C. So C, now compared to 62, we have the hypotenuse and we have the adjacent side. Okay. So what, what trig identity or trig function are we going to use for the hypotenuse and adjacent side? Okay. Adjacent hypotenuse, I'm thinking cosine, okay? So I'm thinking cosine of that angle that we know of 62 degrees is equal to adjacent, which would be 6, to over hypotenuse, which is C, okay? Now, we need to solve for C, so I need to multiply by C. So we got C times the cosine of 62 is equal to 6. To solve for C, the last step would be to divide by cosine of 62 on both sides. So C is equal to 6 divided by the cosine of 62 degrees, which is as going to end up being 12.8. Okay. Now, again, we were talking about how your calculator needs to be in terms of degrees. So when you're in your calculator, you need to go into mode and make sure that it is in terms of degrees, okay? I was lucky I had my old notes up, so I got that. But if it was in terms of radians and I typed that in, I would have got that wrong. 
okay? So if it, you're given degrees, make sure that your calculator is in terms of degrees. Later on, we're gonna learn about radians. Not right now though. So, last one, okay? You measure a flagpole, you stand at 20 feet from the base. Okay, the angle of elevation from the point on the ground to the top of the pole is 65 degrees. Find the height of the pole. So I'm going to use this. Okay, angle of elevation. So that's where we go. We start level with us and we're going up. Okay, so let's say the flagpole was here. Okay, and it said we were 20 feet from the flagpole. So there's 20 feet there. And we know that the angle to the top of the flagpole is 65 degrees. Okay. Now the question is asking, find the height of the pole. The height of the pole is going to be right here. We don't know what that is, so let's say it's x. Now, if I'm given an angle and a side length, that's all I need to find that missing height for this pole. Okay. So I have 65 degrees. We have the opposite and the adjacent side to that angle. Opposite, adjacent, toa, tangent. So tangent of 65 degrees is equal to the opposite over adjacent. So x over 20 multiplied by 20 multiplied by 20. We got 20 tangent of 65 is equal to x which x is going to equal a distance or a height of 42.9. And we are in terms of feet. That is the height of the pole. Now, when it comes to these, again, it's go start with a angle, okay? Figure out, okay, we need to figure out the opposite side. So we have to have the opposite side, and then we have, we know the adjacent side. So we have to have you opposite, adjacent, and then from there, determining, okay, which trig function uses opposite and the adjacent side, which in this case, tangent did. Other than that, um, there will be a worksheet that goes along with this. You need to do, I believe it's the first 10 problems and make sure to check the to-do list. Um, other than that, if you have questions, make sure you're coming into office hours. Other than that, have a good day.